Good morning friends, welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss method overriding in detail for you. So I sincerely request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First, let me define what is a method overriding. Method overriding allows us to change the implementation of a method in the child class that is already defined in the parent class. What is the meaning is that you have a parent class. Suppose let's take that you have a class A. Inside the class A, you have a, some method called show. Okay. Some arguments are there. Okay. And you have written some statements. Now class B is inheriting the class A. So in this scenario, class A is called as parent class. And class B is called as child class. Now inside the child class, you are defining the same method with the same signature. I think you know what is meant by same signature. Meaning is that same number of arguments or same number of types of arguments. Is it clear the number of arguments should be same and the type should be same and all these things. Okay. So that is what. So whatever you have written here suppose let's say that here you are returning print hi and let's say that you are printing how are you then if you are calling the method called show then whatever the statements which are there in this child class those only will be implemented so you are overriding whatever the implementation you have done on the method called show in the parent class will be overridden by the child class okay so this is what the meaning of method overriding so to implement the method overriding one is that inheritance is very important you should have a parent class and you have a child class and the name of the method should be same and the signature also should be same then only we can achieve the method overriding now let me discuss with a one example for you suppose let's take that i have a class called a now inside the class, let me use the init method underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Okay. And then I am writing self. Okay. Here I am writing a statement called print. I hate Pernica tutorials. I hate Pernica tutorials YouTube channel. Something I am writing. You usually have an opinion on the YouTube channels that we don't like the YouTube channels. Okay. Now let's take that you have a class B which is inheriting the class A. So the class B is a child class or the derived class from the parent class or the super class or the base class. Now let's take that inside this method means inside the class B you are writing a method called init. Okay, underscore underscore self. Then let's take that you are writing print. I love Pernica tutorials. I love Pernica tutorials you are writing. Okay, then let's take that I am creating again object some S1 for the parent class. Okay, then what will happen? then you will get the output as I hate Pernica tutorials only. In this case, you will get the output as I hate Pernica tutorials. Suppose let's take that instead of you have created an object for the parent class, let's take that you have created an object for the child class. Okay, you know that whenever you create an object, the init method will be invoked. Now look at here as you are doing the inheritance, whatever the properties are there for the place, parent class will be come to the child class that is what the inheritance am I right so now you have an init method here and also you have init method now already I have discussed now this one will be overriding this one so if you create an object for the child class then this init method only will be invoked so you will get the output as I love Pernica tutorials let me write in shortcut as pt 
okay similarly not only this one suppose let's take that you have defined a user defined method now let me erase this entire thing let's take that you are defining a method called show and you are writing self okay and here you are writing print like okay and let's take that you are creating a child class from the parent class now let's take that here you are not giving any or things so you have written a statement called pass now let's take that you are creating an object for the child class called b then what will be the output if you write statement called s2 dot show now in this case look at here as there is no show method in the child class and you know that from the parent class all the properties will come to the child class so if you create an object for the child class and if you are calling the show method then it will be given output as like so this one will be invoked and you will get the output as like suppose let's take that i am creating an object a method called show in the child class also and i want to write print share share the pernica tutorials with your friends now let's take that now i am creating an object called s2 for the child class if i write s2 dot show will it give output as like will it give the output as share obviously it will give the output as share only because whatever the method is there in the parent class will be overriding by the child class because you have the same method and same signature that is very important is it clear so in this case you will get the output as share now let's take that lot of my youtube viewers they want to like and also they want to share now what is the modification i should do so that i should get the output as like and share look at here i will do that one also but that is not related to method overriding but i will discuss for you because i want my viewers to do the like and share also so first they should like it then they should share it so what i will do here is that inside the show method i will write super dot okay super dot means super means the parent class you call the show okay is it clear then you write print share okay now if you are creating an object any object for the child class and if you call the show method okay then you know that this one will be called because it will be overwritten then super dot show so it is going to the parent class and show so this one will be executed so what will be the output you will get you will get the like then print share so here you will get the output as share so like this you can do suppose if you, from a child class if you want to call some parent class you can use the super i think this one should be i'm really sorry okay this is the modification you should do i hope it is clear for you for better understanding i will implement these things in the jupyter notebook first let me define a class called a and inside the class i am defining a method called init method okay which is nothing but a constructor now i am writing a statement called print in class a okay now i am defining another class called b however i am inverting the properties of class a so here class b is the child class class a is the parent class okay now i am defining init method inside the class b okay so now i am writing a statement called print in class b okay now if i create an object called s1 for the class a and if i run the code i will get the output as in class a because you are creating an object for the class a so init method will be invoked 
which is there in the class A and you will get the output as in class A. This is what you are getting. Suppose let's take that if I create an object for the class B and if I execute the program then I will get the output as in class B. Look at here. This is what you will get it in class B. So what is happening? You are getting the properties of class A into the class B. So in class B you have two init methods but it will overwrite the first one. So this method which is there in the class B only will be invoked. So that's why you are getting the output. However, let's take that you want to even invoke the super class so that what you can do super dot init method. Okay, super dot underscore. Now you will get the output as in class A and class B because you are calling the init method which is there in the class A also. That's why you are writing it as super because for the class B super class is A. Now we will modify the program little bit so that you will understand the method overriding also. Okay, this is one example for method overriding. Now what I will do, I will say, um, let's take the sum only. Let me define a method called sum and I'm writing self. Okay, then I'm writing print. Okay, I hate Pernica tutorials. Okay, as a owner of the Pernica tutorials, I don't really like the Pernica tutorial YouTube channel because students are not subscribing to this channel. But let's take that there is a one subscriber called B who is inheriting the my Pernica tutorials. Okay, so he is thinking that the Pernica tutorials very superb. Okay, and he always says that I love Pernica tutorials YouTube channel. Okay. Look at here. If I create an object for the class A and if I write a statement called s1.sum, okay, so then in this case, which statement will be executed? You are calling the a method which is there in the class A. Then you will get the output as I hate Pernica tutorials. Okay, however, let's take that I am creating an object S1 for the class B. In this case, the, you will get the output as I love Pernica tutorials. Is it clear? Because the class B consists of this method and also this method because class B is a child class for the parent class called A. So obviously child class will get all the properties of parent class. But however, it will do the method overriding so you will get the this output only if you want to get the i hate pernica tutorials and i love pernica tutorials then you can use the super dot the method name is sum okay now if you execute this program first you will get the output as i hate pernica tutorials then i will get the output as i love pernica tutorials i hope you have understood about method overriding if you still have any doubts related to this concept, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.